What's going on everybody? I'm Pastor Chris, the online pastor here at CL, and I just want to say thanks for checking out Covenant Love Church right here on YouTube. We've got a great message today, but do me a quick favor and subscribe to this channel. Why, you ask? So you can be one of the first to know when we have a new message up or a new video online that's ready for you to view. And with that, let's jump right into the message. I need you to let somebody know. I need you to do it so loud that if somebody next to you's got on a weave, it turns. That's pretty loud. Now I know some of you are sitting there going, what kind of church is this? It's a loud church. Amen. All right, turn to somebody next to you and say, take the limits off. Amen. All right, let's turn to Psalms, the 78th chapter. Amen. Psalm 78, beginning with verse 40. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a little bit of time. But I am going to get to the end because something special. God has something special for us today. I just want to go to the end right now. <laughs> All right. How often? This, this is when the Spirit of God is speaking about the children of Israel that were in covenant with God, that were His covenant people, that He had delivered and set them free from the most powerful nation at that time on the face of the earth, which was the nation of Egypt. And so... They got out, and as they were going out, they got into a place that they were really not trusting God. They were looking at everything that they could see around them, all the things that they felt like that were going to happen to them because they were so full of fear, doubt, and unbelief. And they spoke it constantly, and they grieved the Holy Spirit. They grieved God they, they, they put the Lord in a position that even though he was doing things, if it had not been literally at, at about the middle way, if it hadn't been for the intercession of Moses, God was ready to just say, oh, I'm, I've had it with this. And even the Bible tells us in the New Testament, it tells us don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And we're going to see how they, how they grieve the Lord. But he said, how often they provoked him. And the word provoked there means they became bitter, disobedient, and rebelled. How often they provoked him in the wilderness. Now, this is amazing. Because, because this is the reason that in the Hebrew language and in the Greek, which the New Testament is written in, sometimes you have to look up certain words because many times the words that we think in English the definition is not the real definition of what it is in the Hebrew so it says how often they provoked him disobedient rebelled in the wilderness the word wilderness there is an incredible definition the word wilderness there means mouth and speech Okay, so how they provoked him, disobedient and rebelled, uh, uh, provoked him in their mouth and in their speech. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then it says, and grieved, which means, now watch this, a very important word for us in this day and time. And displeased him, it grieved means displeased him in the desert. In other words, they displeased him in a position and a place where they were going through a wilderness and desert time. But he was with them. The whole time he was, he was there, he was with them, and he would withhold nothing from them. He just wanted them to totally trust him in the desert and in the wilderness. Every single time we're going to have dry times in our life. There's going to be times that we're going to have desert times in our life. It's going to be full of heat, and it's going to seem like there's lack in our lives, and it, it, it's going to seem like that everything around us uh, is just working against us. 
But in the middle of that, you've got to understand God is right there in the middle with you. And out of it, he's going to bring glory and honor to his name. He will not leave you in that position. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. So he says, now, now, now I want you to look at this. He, it dis, they displease him in the desert. Now, let me set this straight. Number one, there is a difference between the love of God and us pleasing him. God loves us unconditionally. Nothing will ever change that. Matter of fact, God loved you before you were ever saved. If you're here today and you haven't received Jesus as the Lord of your life, if you have not been born again by the Spirit of God, God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay? So God loved us before we were even born again. And then after we were born again, the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts. Because God is love and he came to live on the inside of us. But it's our it's our responsibility to bring pleasure to his heart and to please him. Listen to what happened. If I make a decision, which I made this decision as a young man a long time ago, I am going to please God. Did I make mistakes and goof up at times? Yes, but I was quick to repent and learn my lesson. But I have lived my life to bring pleasure and to please him. In every aspect of my life. Listen to what the Bible says here. In Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 7. It says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Glory to God. Man, I love that scripture. So how do I please him? All right, let's look at this. Hebrews 11th chapter, beginning with verse 5. Hebrews 11, verse 5. By faith, he goes back and talks about Enoch right now. Here's a man that served God way back in the book of Genesis. But he says, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony. Everybody turn to somebody next to you and say, testify. Testify. Testimony. Testimony. Listen, listen, listen. He had this testimony. Let me say something to you. If all you do is get excited about yesterday's testimony, it means that you have no dream or vision for tomorrow. Because if you have a dream and a vision for tomorrow, you're going to get excited about what's there in the future and in your destiny. I thank God for what happened back here. But if all I have is yesterday's testimony, you don't have a dream. You don't have a vision. So in the name of Jesus, you're going to get one before the day's over. You're going to dream his dream. You're going to have his vision. Praise God. The Bible says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your handmaids, your maidservant will prophesy. And he says, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even if you're old, you're supposed to have a dream. Even if you're retired, you're supposed to have a dream. I'm still seeing visions. I'm still young. Glory to God. He says this, By faith, the was taken away. Before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible It is impossible. There is no other way. It's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, if God didn't give us a way and a vehicle whereby we could get faith, that would be a statement of injustice. That would not, God would not be fair. But he did. Listen to Romans 10, chapter verse 17. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the Bible tells us 
It's important that we renew our mind because when you get born again, your spirit man gets born again, but your mind has still been educated by this whole culture, by the world system, and by your five senses. So that's the reason that you have to get into the Word of God. That's the reason you get in daily into the Word of God. That's the reason that up on our website that I have put through how you can read through the Bible and you can read with me through the whole year. And if you miss a couple of days or you miss something, don't get upset. Thank God's mad at you. Just pick up where you just pick up the next day, next two days or week or whatever it is and keep right on trucking. Eventually, you're going to get through the whole thing. You can start any time. So in Romans 12, 2, it says this. Romans 12, chapter verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world. That's what we were conformed. We were conformed to the world. But he's telling us now that we're born again believers. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. That's metamorphosis. That's like a caterpillar weaving in, in a cocoon and then breaks out and comes out a butterfly. Come on, turn to somebody next to you and say, it's time for you to fly. It's time for you to break out and fly. And do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. So when he says the renewing of my mind, renewing to, by, by how? What is the instrument? The Word of God. And he says the, the renewing of your mind so that you may prove You may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of of God. Because the Word of God is the will of God. He and His Word are one. The Word, it says, don't be conformed to this world. The word conform means to conform oneself or one's mind and character to another's pattern. In other words, because you're born again, you act differently. If If you try to live your life to be accepted by people who are not been born again, by, by all your peers that put pressure on you, and you want to be accepted because you don't want to be mocked, you don't want to be reproached, you don't want to be bullied, you don't want to be made fun of, then they will force you to conform to their fashion, their pattern, their way of life. And when you do that, you take yourself right out of the will of God. And you open the door for the enemy to bring total destruction in your life. And when you do that, guess what's going to happen? Because this is what the devil's after. When you do that and you conform to who you're not and you become who they are, you lose your identity. And when you lose your identity, you become confused. And confusion is not of God. So... So the, so the word conform means to conform oneself, one's mind, character to another pattern. Fashions, to fashions oneself, my mind and my pattern, to uh, according to what I am holding on or what I am going to get involved with. So the Bible actually tells us not to be conformed to this world or the culture, even though I live in the culture, I live in the world, I'm here, but my behavior, the way I talk, the way I do things, is going to be different because I'm going to be conformed to something else. Listen to Romans 8, chapter verse 29. For whom you foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. Firstborn to be raised from the dead. Firstborn to be born again. And you and I are in there somewhere because there was a second born and then a third born and then a fourth. And and we're in there sometimes. We're not a number. We're the sons of the living God. But we got born again and we are in the family of God. But notice this. It says, whom he foreknew, he also predestined. See, God knew you before you were ever born in this earth. God's, listen to this, God's perception of you was before your conception. He knew you before you were even conceived. How how do we know that? Because the Bible says he's the father of all spirits. He's the father of all spirits. The moment that you were 
conceived. God put your spirit into that seed. That seed, that egg came together, boom! Your spirit was released, coming right in there. That's the reason abortion is so atrocious and so heartbreaking. And I'm not saying that to condemn anybody. If you, you know, in your younger age, I, I think about my younger age, crazy stuff I did. But if we did something, you know, before we were born again, thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for delivering us from a guilty conscience and shame. Thank God for that. Amen. So who he foreknew, and, and, and by the way, you can read in, in, in Psalms 139, it says, before you ever lived one day, God had written all of your days before you ever lived one of them. In other words, you automatically have, there was an autobiography written of you before you were ever born. And so when we get born again, then the Spirit of God begins to reveal to us the destiny that he has for us and the way he wants us to represent him in every area of life regardless of where we are so the apostle paul comes and he says in second corinthians 5th chapter verse 9 and 10 therefore everybody say therefore when you find that there you want to find out why it's there for what it's there for so he's saying this he said therefore we make it our aim, this is our aim, this is what we're shooting for. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. Why? For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he's done, whether good or bad. We are cleansed from our sin. Here's what he's talking about. What am I doing for the kingdom of God? How am I representing the kingdom of God? Of God. Notice this that he said, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That is not the 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 what is called the great white throne judgment, where unbelievers will be judged and then they will be cast into the lake of fire along with the with, with the devil. And and God does not want that to, for anybody, you know. Uh, but if I make a choice that I don't want to live for God and I don't want to accept his salvation, then hell is the only place that, that awaits me. That's very, very sad because God has got a great destiny for each and every person. Uh, and, and, and so it's important we do that. So when I read this scripture, that's the reason that I cannot live in the past. My eyes are focused on my future. And my future is I know that I'll stand before God and give an account for my life. So my focus is always on the future. I can't change anything back here. But I can sure make sure my responsibility and what I do going forward, knowing that day that I'll stand before Jesus, I want to do everything that I can that is pleasing to him. When it says we make it our aim to be well-pleasing, the word well-pleasing there means to be in full agreement with. That's the reason in Amos, the third chapter, verse 3, it says, Can two walk together unless they be agreed? And, and the answer to that is no. They can't. So I've got to be in agreement with God. Okay, now let's go back to Psalm 78, verse 41. It says this, Yes, again and again they tempted God, which means they tested Him and limited and limited the Holy One of Israel. Listen to this. The word limited there means it has a sense of restraining and restricting a person or persons from what they can do because of others' own attitudes and actions. That's the reason I constantly am checking my attitude before I even have action. Because the Bible says in Isaiah, if you're willing and obedient you'll eat the good and the fat of the land. You can be obedient but not willing. I remember one time when I came in and 
and our sons were doing a video game, and I'd ask them to go clean their room. And this was on a Saturday morning. I told them, I said, make sure you clean your room before you come down and play. So I went up and checked the room. How many of y'all inspect and check? You should be. And so I went up and hadn't been clean. So I went down and I said, okay, guys. And I reached over, turned the video game off. Dad, what are you doing? I said, I ask you to clean the room and it's not clean. So I need you to go up and I need you to clean the room. Now we had some steps in our house and they got up like that. And then you could hear this going up the steps. Which means they were obedient, but they were not willing. So that day, they didn't eat the good and the fat (laughs) of the treats that they could have had. Amen? So it's important that we check our attitude, make sure our attitude is right. And our heart is right, because we need an attitude that is right and a heart that is right also. So... So he said, they attempt, they attempt, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. Now watch this, because it goes through what they did. How do we limit God and His blessings for us? Number one, they, they questioned God's power and His willingness to release it for, for, for them. Or it, you, you can question God's power, whether He will release it for you or others, and that can put limitations on God. In other words, you get an idea of saying, well, He'll do that for Pastor Al, but I know He won't do it for me. I'm not good enough. I haven't done enough. I'm not like Pastor Al. I don't pray as much as he does. I don't do this. Listen, it has nothing to do with your works. It has everything to do with what Jesus did. You're in right standing with God through Jesus Christ. And so, so, so therefore, don't say, I'm not good enough or I don't deserve this. Get out of that stinking thinking. That is wrong theology. Jesus said, are you not more valuable than all the birds in the air? Remember who you are. Remember that God came and put his spirit on the inside of you. How much more valuable than than can you possibly think that God would come to live inside of you? You are his child. You are his son. You are his daughter. That's who you are. So when I begin to question, well, I don't know if God's going to do this for me or not. I don't know if it's going to happen. When you begin to question that, instead of praising him in the middle of your darkness, in the middle of your situation, in the middle of just saying, God, I trust you. God, I trust in you. I am not going to lean to my own understanding. In all my ways right now, I'm going to acknowledge you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to declare, and I am going to speak the word of God no matter what I feel, no matter what I see. I am trusting you 100%. You know, and most of you know this. You know that that Tave and I both were dealing with all kinds of sinus. I mean, we were attacked like crazy. And I'll never forget this. Three days or four days, three or four days before I was supposed to fly out to Brazil, still fighting the fight of faith, still standing in the name of Jesus Christ, the devil literally spoke to my heart and said, you're not going to be able to go to Brazil. You're not going to Brazil. Because this is going to stay for a while. You don't even know what's going on, really. But this is going to stay. I said, you are an absolute liar. You are a liar. I rebuke you. I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. And when I said that, stuff was running out of my nose. My head was about this. I know you don't like me to be graphic, but I'm going to be graphic. So, 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 so. My head was feeling about this big. I was feeling weak. But before the day before I got on that airplane, boom. Man, I was ready to go. I mean, I was ready to go. But now, now listen, listen. I told Tavia this. I got on the airplane, 
It's about, it's an, it's a, I have to fly into Atlanta, and then from Atlanta, it's a nine-hour flight uh, uh, to, to Brazil. I got on the airplane about four hours into the flight. I'm sitting there just going over my notes, and I'm reading and everything, and the next thing I know, chills hit me. I mean, it just, everything you could imagine started coming on me. And I sat there in that seat, and I said, in the name of Jesus, you are defeated. You will not put this on me in the name of Jesus. I command you, take your filthy, dirty hands off of me. I break your power and command you, go in Jesus' name. You can't do that too loud because people around you might turn you in as, as a terrorist or something who you don't, you, do, you, you don't know what to think. But I, listen, I made that declaration and listened to me. And I started praying in tongues. I started praying in the Spirit. I started declaring the Word of God. And in 30 minutes, that thing broke. And I, by the time I got to Brazil, I mean, I'm telling you, I am on fire. I am ready to run. I am ready to jump. I am ready to do what God wants us to do. In the name of Jesus, you have to fight the fight of faith. All right, let me go. Let me go. go, go, go. So here's what they, here's what they did. Look, 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 here's something they did. Psalm 78, verse 42, 43. They did not remember his power and how he rescued them from their enemies. Sometimes, how can we get to the place that we forget how God delivered us out of death, had delivered us out of all of our sin? If God delivered us and saved us and delivered us from death and the resurrection power, that raised Christ from the dead, lives on the inside of us. How can we forget the power that is available to us and the power that God has given us and start questioning whether he will do what he said he will do or not or his willingness to release it for us? They did not remember his power and how he rescued them from the enemies. They did not remember his miraculous signs in Egypt. Oh, my gracious Think about what he did to Egypt and how quickly we forget what God's done in our life and get into self-pity, whining, complaining, murmuring, forgetting how big our God is, how powerful our God is and his wonders in the, in the plain of Siloam. Remember the man who wanted his son set free from demonic oppression? In Mark the ninth chapter, verse 22 and 23, it says, the, the, the man said this to Jesus, the Spirit often throws him into the fire. Talking about his son. The Spirit often throws him into the fire and into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. Listen, parents. When the devil starts attacking your kids, you need to use the name of Jesus. You need to use the power and the keys that you have got. First and foremost. He said the spirit often throws him into the fire and into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us. Now watch this. And help us if you can. That statement literally, Jesus was on his way and that statement stopped him. In other words, that statement had the potential of limiting the power of God. And we know that because the Bible also tells us in, 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 in another scripture that uh, Jesus could do no mighty works, no mighty miracles in the place where he was at because of their unbelief. Only just a few little things, headaches and stuff like that, were healed. Jesus says this, what do you mean if I can? Think about how we pray. Oh God, if you can do this. Oh God, if you can do that. Oh God, can you do Oh God, can you do this? And if you could hear the voice of God, he would say, "What do you mean if I can?" Look what Jesus said. Look what Jesus said. Jesus He said, Jesus said, "If you can." Jesus then said, "Anything is possible." Anything is possible. Anything is possible. 
Come on, you got to get your mind out of the impossibility thinking and into the possibility thinking. And I'm not talking about, this is not just mind motivation. This is believing the power and the word of Almighty God. He said anything is possible if a person believes. And you're going to have to fight the fight of faith. It, it's, not, it's not just starting out, it's finishing. And I'm going to tell you right now, faith is for the middle. <laughs> because it's in the middle of when you start believing and you've prayed, it's in the middle that the devil brings the storm. So faith is for the middle. And, you, and it's for all the way through. But even when storms come, you still have your faith. You still speak the word of God. You still take your authority. You still use the, king, the keys of the kingdom. How about when, G, when the angel showed up with a message from God for Mary? In Luke, the first chapter, verse 37 and 38, he said, first thing, out of his mouth, Mary said, how, how is this possible? How can this take place? Listen, if you have God's word on it, don't try to figure out how he's going to do it. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Let me tell you what nothing means right here in the Greek. Nothing. Nothing. Nada. Is that Spanish? Oh, hallelujah. For not with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord. That's when you and I say, behold. The son and the daughter of God. Behold. That's when you need to tell the devil. Behold. Let it be to me according to your word. I cannot tell you how many times that I have used that scripture. I'll say by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Let it be me to me according to your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. And the angel departed from her. So listen to this, Psalms 138, verses 7 and 8. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me, which means delivers me, sets me free. I love this. Listen to, listen to verse 8. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. For your faithful love, O oh Lord, endures forever. He will perfect that which concerneth me. I don't know how it's going to work out, but it's going to work out. The Bible says all things work together for good. Those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I love you, Father. I love you, Lord God. So I don't know how you're going to work it out, but I declare this will work out for my good in the name of Jesus Christ. All things are going to work for my good in Jesus' name. That's not being prideful. That's me boasting in my God. That's me having confidence in the covenant that I have with my God. The other thing they did, they questioned God's ability and willingness to provide for, for their needs. And when you question God's ability and willingness to provide for your needs, that's going to limit him. Listen to verse 78, I mean chapter 78, again verse 19 and 20. Yes, they spoke against God. How do you speak against God? I don't know if God can do this or not. I don't know if God can... Turn this around. I don't know if you know how it is. I'm going to tell you right now, you need to get out of your negative speaking. You need to, if you don't have anything, if you can't say anything positive, just start praying in tongues. Speaking in the Holy Ghost. Every time you start speaking negative, you are saying God's not powerful enough to turn this around. God's not powerful enough to change this. God can't do this for me. In other words, you're saying God doesn't really love me. I know he loves other people, but he really doesn't care for me. Why would he allow this to happen to me? 
No, it hasn't got to do where God allows this to happen. You're living in a fallen world. You're living where people sin and people live by sin. And they're motivated by the sinful nature on the inside of them. You live in a world that there's principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and demonic spirits. They're all here. And then, and, and, and the, the, everything they want to do is stop you from advancing, stop you from fulfilling your destiny because they know that if you keep going and they keep, you keep believing, there's going to be a testimony. And people are going to be affected by that testimony. He said they spoke against God and said, Can God prepare a table in the middle of the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock. Oh, I, oh, 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 he, he did it. For somebody else. He did it for somebody else. He did it for Sally. He did it for Uncle Joe. I don't know if he'll do it for me. Oh yeah, I've I've seen him do miracles. Oh, he struck the rock. And the waters gushed out. And the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? Well, I got an answer to that in the New Testament. Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I got an answer for us in Philippians 4, chapter, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Everybody say everything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Jesus said this to every single one of us. Turn to somebody next to you and say, Jesus is getting ready to speak to you. And it's through the Word of God. Listen to this. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 31, 33. So don't worry about these things. Saying. Notice the words. Saying. 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 What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. If he already knows it, then my prayer time should be one of shouting. Glory to God. Father! Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously. Live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Wow. Praise God. The other thing that limits him in blessing us is when we live and walk in sin after God has given me his grace and mercy, salvation through Jesus Christ. Listen to Psalm 78, verse 17. Yet they kept on sinning against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you in here are born again? Let me see your hands. How many of you are born again? Listen to this. Listen to what Paul says in Romans 6, chapter verse 12. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not let sin. Well, you know, I just, my feelings and my, you are not your feelings. You have feelings, but you are not your feelings. Don't let your feelings become your behavior and your actions. Your feelings will lie to you. This flesh is not born again. It'll have impulses, lusts, all kinds of things will pop up. But you take dominion over it because you have dominion. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have a new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. Hallelujah. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Then Paul said, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean that we can go on sin? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living, and it leads to His blessings. 
listen to me. What does God desire for your life? We are living so far below what God has because we've got this stinking thinking of a spirit of poverty. And in the name of Jesus, I break that demonic spirit in the name of Jesus. Oh, poor me. I can't do it. I can't have anything. You know, you're the son and daughter of God. You need to quit thinking like they thought in the desert and in the wilderness. You need to start thinking now in the new covenant and who you are. And you need to start praying like that. You need to quit begging. You're not a beggar. You are a son and daughter of the living God in covenant with Almighty God. You need to start praying like that. You need to start acting like that. Did you know that in the book of Numbers, when, when God was telling the priest, and now the Bible says we're priests, he was telling the priest, he said, every day, every day stand up and speak blessing over my people. So many times we're getting up and we're not speaking blessing. We're speaking limitation. We're speaking, I don't have this, and I don't have that, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. That's not the God kind of speaking. That conversation is not compatible with being a son and a daughter of God. He says, stand up every day. May the Lord, he said, release these blessings. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. What were they doing? Releasing the blessing of God. And once it was released with words, then God made it come to pass. What are you releasing in your life? What are you releasing over your children? What are you releasing in your family? What are you releasing out of your mouth? Listen to this in Leviticus 26, 3 and 13. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you the seasonal rains. I'm telling you, I'm saying something to somebody right now. Your dry season is over. Your dry season is over. Matter of fact, I want you to stand up right now. Stand up with me right now. I want you to declare in the name of Jesus, my dry, my dry season is over. Lord. The rain Lord. of the blessings of God blessings and the Holy Spirit of God Lord. is upon me in the name of Jesus. Listen to this. The land will yield its crops and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Some of you, the devil's come to steal your seed. Some of you haven't seen what you think the harvest should be. But I've got news for you right now. This is a time of fruitfulness. There's a time of fruitfulness. Some of you just standing there. Oh, you can hear my words and you can think, oh, that's nice, preacher. You can think it is. Or you can hear the Spirit of God speaking to you right now and say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I'm going to tell you something. Ladies, I'm going to tell you this because God's already shown me. This conference is not going to be like any other conference that you have. There's going to be an overflow of the power of God. But I'm going to tell you right now, this conference, literally, you are going to be transformed. The devil fears you coming to this conference. I know already what's going to happen. Listen to this. 
Your threshing season will overlap with the grape harvest. And your grape harvest, I'm telling you, there's overlap coming right now. I just release overlap of harvest in the name of Jesus. Will overlap with the season of planting grain. Some of you have been walking through the wilderness so long right now, you can't even latch on to what I'm saying. You're allowing the wilderness to dictate you right now, your emotions and the way you see and the way you feel. You better break that. You better break out of that in the name of Jesus. Listen to this. He said, he said, you will eat your fill and live securely in your land. Some of you need to be dreaming again. And you don't need to be dreaming fear dreams. Pastor, what are fear dreams? Fear dreams are the dreams that you dream that you yourself can accomplish. You need to get God's dream. That is going to take you and God. You need to expand what you're seeing and what you're believing and what you're praying for. You need to expand your territory. Expand in the name of Jesus. You need a new vision. Every dream assassination spirit is bound in the name of Jesus. Is bound in the name of Jesus. The spirit of surviving is over. The spirit of thriving, thriving is taking place. Say this with me, I will not just survive, but I declare today, I will thrive. I will thrive. The spirit of thriving is upon me in my life in the name of Jesus. Say this with me, the spirit of failure is broken. The spirit of being unproductive is broken. I take authority over the spirit of limitation. It is broken. It is leaving now in the name of Jesus. No more poor me. No more poor me. Everything I put my hand to, it will prosper. The spirit of lack and the spirit of poverty is broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bam, bam. Boom, boom, boom. Hallelujah. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. I will give you peace in the land, verse 6. And you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. Say this with me. Spirit of fear, you have no place in my life. You are bound. I resist you. I rebuke you. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Turn to somebody next to you and say, Be bold. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks again for joining us here on YouTube. I believe that God had something special just for you today. And maybe you were listening to the message and thought of someone who also needs to hear it. 
then please feel free as always to use this video as a ministry tool and share it with them today. And if you ever need more information about CL, be sure to check out our website. It's super easy to remember, mycl.church. And if you're ever in town, we would love for you to come to church and say hey. But if you're not in Fayetteville, you can always check out our church online, which happens every Sunday morning at 8.30 and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, I'm Pastor Chris.